you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello viewers, welcome along to another video. Today we continue our FIFA 20 Custom Tactics series. The series where we take real life systems and I show you how to not only replicate them in FIFA 20 but also how to adapt them slightly so that they will actually work for you in game and you can play them. Today we switch our focus on to Chelsea and the tactics that they have been employing currently this season under Frank Lampard. This has been quite highly suggested, so I thought we'll get onto this one next. Um, so, mixed results at the start of the season, it's fair to say. The system itself in real life does still have vulnerabilities, particularly with the personnel, the likes of Jorginho, who you know can't quite fit into the system. Kovacic, another one. The team, by the way, that we've currently got on this game is the one that they're most recently playing. So I'm recording this uh, a couple of days after the 4-4 draw against Ajax. So this is pretty much the team that they've been going with. Kante, the likes, Christensen, Rodrigo, etc. have been uh, injured. So this is the team we're going with. The, the roles pretty much stay the same. Um, you know, minus one or two minor uh, glitches here and there. So it is a 4-2-3-1, regardless of what people have you think. The reason why they do sort of employ this is, uh, you know, the two holding midfielders will give the defence more protection. It's a very high-intense, high-pressing tactic. So as a result, uh, you just give yourself that little bit more stability, or you at least try to. So you go into the uh, formations, you want to select the 4-2-3-1 wide. And then what you want to do is you want to alter some positions. So first of all, you want to change the two fullbacks to wingbacks. Now, the reason being is that they're actually um, in FIFA, and this is where we adapt it slightly for FIFA so they all work. Um, in FIFA, you'll find that um, if they're playing as a, a regular right back or left back, they don't get quite as forward. They won't get as wide on the pitch. The fullbacks in this in uh, this system will create the majority of the width. So you want to change them to fullbacks or to wing back, sorry. And then the two right and left midfielders, you actually want to move them up as well and you want to change them to wingers. So the formation might look a little bit weird, uh, but it is still a 4-2-3-1. Um, the reason being, again, is that left wingers will play more like how they do in real life for Chelsea. So um, they're going to get into those more advanced areas, they're going to get in behind more, and also they'll be higher at the pitch to press afterwards. Again, this tactic is very much... Um, you know, sta st stapled on pressing high at the pitch, trying to win the ball back instantly. So, we'll move in from that onto the instructions first, and then we'll come on to the tactics shortly afterwards. So, first of all, we'll go through all the player instructions. Um, very self explanatory for the keeper, as you would imagine. Sweeper keeper and comes to crosses. Again, they play a very high line. Um, he needs to, uh, to complement that, give them that extra layer of protection. Um, and comes to crosses to be more aggressive play on the front foot and also because it just relieves a bit of a pressure from you it's quite hard to defend corners on this game so comes across is and sweeper keeper in terms of the two center backs they stay exactly the same you don't need to change anything there one thing we do always mention in every video and i'm going to do it again today interceptions unless stated otherwise always keep them on normal because if you change it to aggressive like i say unless it's absolutely important to the role um which it isn't in any of these um players for today um it will dr just drain too much stamina uh, whereas if you change it to conservative to try and conserve stamina you'll find that they're not playing on the front foot enough so normal is just fine so uh keep them all as that and then moving on to the wing backs you want them both joining the attack and overlapping of course again very self-explanatory you, you don't really need to go through that we see it every week. Um, so now we move into the two holding midfielders. Now they both have slightly different roles. Um, and they're very much the same depending on whether it would be, say, Kovacic or Kante. So um, we'll start with Jorginho, first of all. So Jorginho is very much the pivot sort of role. Uh, possession rests on him. He recycles it. Um, that is his predominant role. Um, you don't see him committing himself forward. Are you getting into the box? Also... He doesn't really, well, he doesn't at all, um, you know, press the opposition very much. That's one of the reasons why they've sort of had this issue with, um, you know, defensive um, sort of vulnerabilities, at least early on in the year. Um, because, you know, his pressing nature, not quite as sort of 
emphasised as it should be. So what you want him to do first of all is um, stay back while attacking. So that's very self-explanatory. And in defensive behaviour, you want him to man mark. Now you want both of the two holding midfielders to man mark in this system because um, what you tend to find on this game is a lot of um, times when, say, the opposition have the ball, they're about to cross it in, you'll find that they'll have runners from midfield entering the box. And if the uh, holding midfielders aren't on man mark, they're just going to walk him free because balance doesn't seem to quite um, understand the difference between the opposition being ahead of the midfielders and behind. So you actually want them to be on man mark. So change Jorginho to man mark and also cover wing, of course, because you've also got the, the wing back and the winger will have overlapped and they will get forward just in case they exploit that space, the opposition down the wing. You've then got him and then you've got Mount and Kovacic as the uh, layers of protection. So you want him to cover wing. Moving on to Kovacic. Again, the same in those two areas, man mark and cover wing. But then in terms of attacking support, you want to keep that on balance. So unlike Jorginho, he's going to come in a bit more. Whether it's Kovacic or Kante, they're not going to be all out box-to-box -box midfielders. They don't storm into the box all the time. And therefore, if they did, um, you know, it would leave them too vulnerable, too exposed um, on the counter. There'd be so much space um, in behind the midfield to, um, you know, leave the defence open. So you want that unbalanced and therefore, like I say, it doesn't leave as much space. You won't be committing anywhere near as much as if you got it on get forward. So that rounds off the two holder midfielders. Next, we'll move on to Mason Mount, of course supremely talented player and you're going to find him to be very much the uh, the focal point of um, attack particularly through the center of course he's the mobile one he's the one who's going to make things happen so first of all defensive support come back on defense again very self-explanatory the entire team other than abraham will be uh, tracking back when they need to of course so you are um, generally going to be playing on the front foot trying to press hide the pitch so it won't matter too much but just as that extra layer of protection you want him to come back on defense and then what you find with mason mount is he gives that Next option after Abraham um, in terms of crosses into the box. So you want him on getting to the box for crosses as well. What you tend to find is then that Abraham won't be quite so isolated, uh, which is what they're very much uh, sort of working towards in this system. So that's all of Mount's roles um, sort of covered. Next, we'll focus on the wingers. And both of them have the exact same sort of role in this system. So that's nice and easy for us. First of all, come back on defense, of course. Then what you want is you want them to cut inside. Now, what happens is in this system is the two wingbacks, of course, we've changed them to wingbacks. They'll overlap, they'll go forward, and then what it creates is if, uh, say, Willian, for example, he cuts inside, it gives the fullback on the opposition side the sort of dilemma of do I stay with my man, do I go, um, and, or do I stay in my area? Um, and then obviously it creates that, that bit of uncertainty. Also, again, as we're talking about Abraham not being quite so isolated up front, you're getting players in closer to him, you're giving him more people to play off and, um, you know, sort of more options for the winger. So you want him to cut inside and also get in behind. They're exploiting uh, their pace and utilising it against the opposition. So cut inside and getting behind is very much the um, sort of hallmark of any sort of possession-based tactic with wingers. Um, you know, we've used it in the likes of uh, the Liverpool system, which we covered, the Man City system, um, and it's very much the same here. Um, and that game go plays into getting into the box with the cross again not being so isolated you're giving yourself that extra option when you're whipping balls in so like i say it's the same with both wingers pulisic on the other side as well come back on defense cut inside getting behind and then get into the box for the cross and then finally we have um tammy abraham so first of all you want him to stay central again you can read that one very much for yourself. Um, he's not drifting out wide. He's very much the focal point of the attack, the target man. So you want him to stay central. And then you want him to actually get in behind. And you'll find that the majority of Abraham's goals, if they're not, say, um, you know, him sort of playing that poacher role, picking up loose balls in the box, etc., scoring within the 18-yard box, it's very much about him getting in behind. So, for example, uh, he scored one. Oh, it was offside, actually. But the one against Ajax, he scored. Uh, he's running in behind. The one against Watford, when Jorginho actually played a lovely through ball. Again, he's trying to get in behind. He's trying to penetrate defensive defences. And he actually has more pace than what people give him credit for. Um, you know, so 
for someone who's six foot four, I think, or six foot five, um, you know, he's got a lot of a lot of pace for someone that tall. So, you know, he also exploits that, and therefore he's very all rounded. And this plays into his hands, getting in behind. Um, so yeah, you want to change that to get him behind. And then finally, with the defensive support, you want him to stay forward. Again, he's the focal point. Not only can he um, you know, get onto those loose balls, but he can hold it up for you. If you just happen to be in a case where you're in trouble, and you need to get it out quickly, he can hold it up. He can gain the possession. Um, but also, he can uh, he can run onto it. Or he can play and hold the ball up and um, you know release people running off of him. So stay forward is very much um, focused on him. So, that completes all of the player instructions. Now we're going to move on to the tactics. So, we're going to have the main style, and then we're also going to make a couple of changes for a more defensive style. Um, so, I'll take you uh, through both of them. But first of all, onto the main style. Um, defensive style, constant pressure. So, this is what you find in... Um, in the Chelsea system, there are very, very rarely systems. I know people sort of bring this up with Liverpool and stuff, which, which we've already covered. Um, people thinking that they're a very sort of gag and pressing, extreme pressing type of team. Not the case. There are actually only a couple of sides who are really um, sort of focused and intent on winning the ball back constantly, just that constant flood of pressure and being in the opponent's faces. And one of them is Chelsea, um, and that's very much the hallmark of their system this year. Remember though, if you're playing with this system, particularly in career mode, you're going to find that a lot of players are obviously going to get tired playing in this system. So, one, you're going to need lots of rotation. And two, remember in, during games, when you're playing on just a game on FIFA, rest in possession. That's so important. Just take five, five in-game minutes off, just where you're passing it between the defence. And, and therefore, they will recover their stamina a little bit and it doesn't burn off so much. A lot of teams do that and, you know, it's a fantastic way of recovering and, and sort of keeping yourself fresh in-game while still maintaining possession of the ball and playing on the front foot. There's nothing wrong with resting in possession, um, you know, for a stamina-related issue. So uh, do bear that in mind. In terms of defensive width, you actually want this on five. The reason being is that usually we say have a really narrow sort of defense but obviously because you're defending from the front um you know generally you're going to be doing that and you're going to be pressing high at the pitch it means that actually if your team's getting too narrow when say the opposition pass it out wide to a fullback or a winger etc um you know the wingers or the fullbacks or your central midfielders whoever it may be will be too narrow to get out to them so if you move this up to five they'll be a bit wider to play the press and to counter the opposition when they're um going to an outlet out wide and also because it's only on five and not on say 10 um if say the opposition do happen to get into your uh, your defensive third their attacking third then uh, you know you'll still be narrow enough not to have people playing through you all the time so put that on five and then depth you want that up to the full, up to 10. Again, plays into constant pressure. To be a, a gig and pressing, extreme pressing team, you have to have a high defensive line just so your team is further at the pitch. And then rather than if they're all the way back, but your attackers stay forward, you're going to have loads of space. You're going to be very stretched. And that is just a recipe for disaster. So you want that on to 10. Moving on to offensively now. Offensive style, again, possession. That's pretty self-explanatory. You know, Chelsea play, they like to play short passing football. They like to be on the front foot. And then in terms of offensive width, you want to lower this down to four. The reason being behind this one is that as soon as you move it to three, it becomes a very narrow. As you can see at the top of the page here, um, it changes the entire mentality. With four, it keeps it just above that level, meaning that... You've still got that emphasis on the short passing game. People are sort of more narrower. They're tucked in a little bit more. But then you've got the wing backs creating the space and the width out wide. Um, and then you've still got the option for wingers, say Willian, Pulisic. Um, in, during moments in the games, they will sometimes stay out wide and look to come inside with the ball then. So width on four very much plays into that hands. And then players in the box, you want to move this up to seven. So that will be, you've got your three in the box. So say you might have Abraham, you're going to have a winger and then either, um, you know, Mount or the other winger. And then maybe a, a fourth coming in as well, which would be either the other winger or Mount. Do you get me? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, trust me, it's how it works. It all 
work just fine um so yeah you want to move that up to seven and then with corners and free kicks what we do in all of these videos and i'm not changing it today is move these up to four each because what happens then is it will bring you leave you two players back which is more than enough because the opposition are never going to have um well they never have, usually have more than one but they're definitely never going to have more than two players staying forward for a corner um, and it's also going to give you then enough options in the box to be a real threat from set pieces so you want to move that up to four now i did mention that we would also have a defensive game plan as well so there's not too much changes to it um you know i'm just gonna have to go through and change the formation again unfortunately you can do all that um it's very much the same all the instructions for the players will remain the same um, we're just going to change these to wing backs um, so if we go to tactics the only difference is going to be rather than on defense constant pressure you want to change this to pressure on heavy touch sometimes um, Chelsea when they're sort of ahead but it's a more tighter game so I'm thinking the likes of um, say when they're ahead against uh, Ajax away or when they were um, playing in Manchester United in the cup etc sometimes they were happy to drop off not all the not not many times but sometimes they will when the game dictates it so you want to change it to pressure on heavy touch meaning that they will drop off and they'll drop behind the ball but during certain moments say if there's a, a loose pass a bad touch etc from the opposition they will still press in that moment so they won't be completely passive and therefore um, again a bit more defensive a bit more sort of solid and compact but at the uh, expense of you know playing on the front foot winning the ball back you know trying to win the ball back instantly and in terms of whip you want to move this down to three again now you become more narrow um, don't let teams play through you etc because um, you know you're going to be playing off playing on the back foot a little bit more and then in terms of depth we did have this up to four now you move this down to five because then it gives you that real mid block and the mid block is very much playing in that into the hands of not being completely passive you've also got that sort of emphasis on you know pressing when you need to but um, you know you do drop off a little bit and try and be a little bit more solid a little bit more compact so that is it actually guys there's nothing else on offensively in the defensive game plan that you need to worry about so that does actually round off this video do let me know what you thought if you've got any questions about the tactic anything that you you're not sure of any sort of other questions relating to it do feel free to get at me in the comment section i i do my best to reply to as many like all the comments i try my best to reply to all the comments um so uh if you do have any any queries about it just just get at me in the comment section and then um you know i'll i'll try to get back to you um if you have any suggestions and stuff for other tactics to do continue in this series then please do let me know don't forget to do that um remember i do have a massive list i'm trying to work my way through so um like i say loads of loads of suggestions but keep them coming in um they're always good always good to add to my list so um you know i'll, I'll bear them in mind don't forget to check out my ac milan career mode series currently ongoing and also a career mode video that i released earlier um or recently about career mode challenges to do if you're uh, interested in that on that note, we are going to finish it off there. Don't be, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more regular gaming content and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload as well. And on that note, we are going to finish there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you for the next one. Come on.